This is Coop and Cassis Rifle TV in association with MTK Global. We're in London. It's been a, a while since I've sat down with this man. Um, it, has, it has been. Lucas Brown, welcome to uh, the UK. Thank you very much. Thank I you. Like when people say that, like it's my right to say welcome to you, like hey. you know. <laughs> I'm not from here, so it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> it's a little bit cold, man. I've got, I've got, I've come from 36 degrees, nice and sunny out of Perth to uh, what was it like seven or something, so yeah, even like that. But yeah, it's a bit cold. Yeah, like I said, welcome to England. <laughs> um, flight okay? Yeah, good, good. Thank you very much to uh, Mr. Eddie Hearn for the business class. Uh, it helps me, you know, six foot five with the long ass legs and everything else. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was good. It was good. Um, obviously, this fight that's now taking place on uh, March the twenty fourth mm -hmm. at the O two is taking such a long time to actually get announced, and obviously the yeah. the various things to be sorted out. Uh, yeah. What was the delay in on your side, Lucas? There's a lot of things. Um, outside things in regards to like other fights on stuff like that like I was still involved in negotiations with Parker um, he's taken the obvious route with Joshua and the money and all that sort of stuff which is which is fine um, there was also an offer with um, Brazil in America so that was a nice for the same money everything else as well so there was a few th different things in that that regards plus um, lawyers with all the the jargon I would like to say so lawyers back as and forth with the jargon yeah Let's let's track back a little bit. Where where does the timeline of the the whole uh, Lucas Brown Dylan White saga start? Because it's turned a bit. I mean, we know what kind of character Dylan White is. And Big mouth dickhead. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you say them. Comments. <laughs> um, but but you're where, agreeing. Why are where, you agreeing? <laughs> where did where did the as we like to call the beef start? I think it's just the fact that he's a big mouth. Honestly, like um, uh, a lot of things that he said. All the way through, um, you know, in including with Twitter and all that sort of stuff, um, he'd say things like, oh, I'm living at my mother's house, which at the time was accurate because I live in Perth and my training camp was in Sydney. So I was at my mother's house in training camp. But the way he says it, is he comes across as if oh, he's, a, um, he's a pizza delivery guy and he's got no money and now he's living at his mum's house. Stuff like that. So it's just the way that he says things. So I, I know it's his poor cry for attention and all that sort of stuff. Like, yeah, he's obviously not the best boxer. So he has to get attention some, some other way. Um, he's got his attention through getting knocked out by um, AJ. Uh, I, I, has he has he got his uh, loss on the record on his on his profile yet? Because he had that for a zero for a long time. I think he's still got it, but you know, stuff like that. So I just think he's a general dickhead, and I don't like general dickheads. So um, for me, it was always something that that I wanted to do, and I think basically now that he's got the WBC silver title as well, it makes sense, um, and we're both ready for it. Before we come on to them, obviously, you know, you spoke about uh, there was talks of. A potential fight between yourself and, and Joseph Parker. So mm -hmm. you were kind of waiting for that situation, whether that was to happen with Anthony Joshua. We yep. now know it is to happen. Yes. To kind of eliminate that from your side. Yep. And there also there was a, a potential fight with Dominic Brazil as well. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it did start all. It started way back in. I was supposed to fight Kuzmin in Russia. I think that was December. It could have been November. Um, and then the Parker Parker one come up just after that. So. It was either sign with Kuzman or potentially have obviously a world title with, with Parker. So we let the Kuzman one go and, and went with Parker. Um, I didn't want to be the pawn in their, their situation. Um, at m most of the times so the information I got back was, yes, it's on, and then now it's not, and yes, it's on, no, it's not. So again, I, I, I have no problem with the, with the fact that he made that choice because it's the obvious, it is a smart choice to go with Joshua and everything else. But at the same time, I didn't want to be the pawn in the situation there. Yeah. Um, Dylan White did an interview recently uh, with Eiffel TV. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but it I mean, wasn't with you, so uh, yeah, okay. it, wasn't, it wasn't important. All right, um, <laughs> no, uh, I think the headline from it was the tattooed penis is getting it. Yeah, yeah, um, that's right. Which is, I'm not sure where that come from. Obviously, I've got tattoos. Is it because I got a bald head? Is that where the penis bit comes from? Do you think? I'm asking you because yeah, yeah, I'm sure he's 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 yeah, in depth told you about it. So is that why? Because I got a bald head. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll find that on Thursday, the press <laughs> conference. Maybe. Um, but, I mean, as a whole, obviously, we've seen kind of Dylan White's career, yeah, so far being sort of highlighted by the Anthony Joshua loss. And I'm sure that's something that he, 
you know, doesn't like being reminded of. No. But um, well, that that and the Chisora fight, which I think he lost anyway. So yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, by the way, I'm not going to get into any opinions about. I realise this. Yeah, who I'm was. trying. I'm trying to sit down there on this fence <laughs> with these splinters in my ass. So, fair enough. Fair know, enough. All okay. Right, all right. But um, I mean, how how do you rate Dylan as a fighter? It, you know, without all the the sort of talking aside. <sighs> he can box. Um, he's got a great work rate. At the same time, I don't think he's got the best chin. Like he's got a he's got a good chin. He hasn't got like yeah, you know, it's not an iron granite chin sort of thing. Um, and the whole body snatcher thing. See, I'd, I'd like to actually take him out in the body. I reckon that'd be awesome if I could take his body out and make him fall that way. But um, yeah, I, I think he relies more on the fact that he's with Eddie Hearn and he's got a big mouth. That's pretty much it. Like he, he can box. Don't get me wrong. But I, I, I look at him as like a, a new Chisora. You know what I mean? Like the gatekeeper. So Chisora had the world title, didn't do any good with it sort of thing. Um, I, I think um, Dylan White's got the shits a little bit because I've been there and won a world title and he hasn't yet. So that could be the shits as well. Yeah. But uh, I think he's decent, but I think I'll bash him. Uh, let's come on to that. I mean, you, you've had kind of a bit of a whirlwind up and down, if that's fair to say, a <laughs> yeah. couple of years. Yeah, man. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, you know, obviously you had the heights uh, of that WBA mm. title win, which sort of didn't work out for you. No. And then, you know, in this, I think there was two in the space of eight months of, yeah, of, right. of failed tests. Can you just talk to me about this? So, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and obviously the first one was you tested positive for Clembrook Roll. And then um, it was the second one was adverse findings, but I'm not actually sure yeah. what what well, it was for. Uh, in Chechnya, three days out from the fight, I had a blood and urine sample, and that was completely cleared. So that also was the reason I've been cleared since for the Chechnya fight, because why the hell would I take the roll in one dose in Chechnya for a world title fight when all it's going to do is give me the shakes and make my heart go faster? Um, so they've, they've seen it the smart way and obviously I, I didn't take it or on my own accord, however you want to look at it. Um, been cleared of that. Unfortunately, I was, I was with a um, place called Bulk Nutrients at the time. Um, I was on a, a lovely pre-workout that was all legal, everything like that. But if you stay on a pre-workout for a, a certain amount of time, it's, it loses its effect. So I just went straight into the shop and said, can I have the best one you got? Okay, no worries. And just walked out. So stupidly enough, that's completely and utterly on my, on my back, it was mm -hmm. my side. Um, yeah, that, that was what I got done with. So I don't know what it was exactly that was in it, but there was something in it that wasn't on the list. So that was completely and utterly my fault. I, I take that. But at the same time, I'm, I'm now counted as somewhat of a, a two-time drug sheet without doing anything, really. Like, you know, I haven't taken any drugs, so to speak. On paper, if you like. That's, nice. Yeah. I like that. I like, you said you were going to sit on, on the fence. Paper. But, you know, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I've since had a clean test. Um, and we're back on the road to recovery. Road to redemption hmm. is the uh, hashtag. Well, it, it's good you speak about it because I mean I was with Shannon Briggs in, in Miami a couple of weeks ago and mm -hmm. he's come off a ban himself. I yep. think, <coughs> obviously from the outside perspective, this is, not. I'm not saying this is happening. It's happening, it seems to be happening more and more and people can't sort of see the, the line between, mm -hmm. you know, who's actually going out there intentionally That's right, yeah. to uh, use performance on enhancing drug and yep. who's, you know, kind of been caught unlucky Mucking for up. like yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right, yeah. So, yeah. you know, I think in the eyes of everyone, they, some people can't, don't see the grey area, it's either black that's or right. white. Yes, yes, yes. And I still, to this day, I just check my, my um, Instagram and, you know, welcome to, welcome to London, welcome to London, drug street. You know, like... Things. Like social media is uh, a sensational thing for that, the lovely platform for people to get onto uh, abuse you. Um, but it's just be unfortunately become part of my life. Just I, I get abused daily, most of it from the UK. Like the, the haters, I should say, clarify that the haters from the UK. But um, yeah, I, I find that <laughs> there's a lot of uh, people in the UK that just like to stir shit, basically. Really? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I've got more fans here in the UK than I do in Australia in terms of number, value, and all that sort of stuff. Mm. So, like, I'm, I'm, I'm very well recepted, recepted, received, received even. Um, but yeah, I, I find that it's, a, it's very much a cultural thing. I don't think it's, it's not that, it's not that well accepted in Australia to just go and abuse someone for no reason. Fishing, as as it's, it's often stated. Um, so yeah, that's where that's where I find myself. 
I can't remember where it was. Was it a quote from yourself that uh, about the fans here want you to beat Dylan White? Was that something you said? Or, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. something you said. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I get a lot of like, yeah, obviously private messages and all that sort of stuff. And a lot of the, I'm from the UK is the first sentence. Please bash, you know, and then brrr, whatever it may be that the uh, the derogatory term that they um, yeah put him under. So I, I think it's excellent. Yeah. You know, why would you want to? Why would you want to be labelled that person? You know, where, where most of your countrymen want you to lose as well. You know what I mean? So I, I think the actual fan base at the fight will probably be more of a 50-50 split, which will be great. We shall see. I mean, uh, <laughs> no, but we shall see because I think, especially boxers like yourself that have boxed in the UK before, and mm. you know, not and more than once as well. Yeah, this the, will be my sixth time. Sixth time. Yeah, yeah. So there are obviously the British boxing fans are aware of you, and yeah. You know, um, yeah. each to their own. You know, yeah. they want to take sort of situations out um, as a reason not to like you. <laughs> as a person yourself, you know. I, yeah. I quite like you, Lucas. But you know. Thank you, sir. You know, Thank but you. I've got my own haters as well. So if I That's can right. get them, and I'm just an idiot with a camera, <laughs> then good luck. I think I think the fact that I'm exactly who I am on camera as I am off camera. I'm just who I am. I say how it is, and this is how I feel, and I'll say it to your face. Um, that's how it is. I, I, I'm not sure if Dylan's one of those people that we put a camera in front of him and he just turns into a dickhead or he's just a dickhead full time. So I'm not sure. The best way I can exp answer that is I think Dylan White is the same on camera as off camera. So he's but, a dickhead full time? Well, I'm just going to say, use the term so you agree? same. You I'm agree? going to use the term he's the same person off camera and on camera. I don't find him to be any different. Okay. Yeah. But how you perceive him to be, <laughs> that's... That's down to you. I like how you got yourself out of that. That's, That's nice. That's nice. I was going to ask you, I mean, I'm not a boxer, as you know. Sri Lankan heavyweight champ. Well, any more, shall we say. <laughs> you know Four. what? I've, Four. I've watched some of your training yes. clips you put out. Yes. And I think to myself, has Lucas Brown made this training technique up? Because <laughs> I, watch, I watch some stuff, yeah? Yeah. And I see loads of different uh, like strength and conditioning, loads of different things you put up. It's great you put them out for people to see, but yeah. I'm sure I'm not the only first person to say, what, what are you doing Why? there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it stuff that's, that um, you've always done, or is it stuff that... There's a lot of variations. There yeah. is a lot of variations. Uh, I understand what you're saying. Right. You're very nicely put. Yeah, instead of saying, what the hell is this guy doing? Um, uh, I, I've got a bit of a kung fu background as well, so there's a, little, a few things from kung fu that obviously people just look at it and go, what the hell's going on there? Um, a lot of the videos I, I post up, I'm not doing whatever I'm doing 100% either. Um, I don't feel like I should give away the secrets and all this sort of stuff. So I, I, I put stuff out there to just show people what I'm doing, but obviously not the full picture and things like that as well. So yes, it may seem confusing, but it's fun. Yeah, no, listen, it, yeah. like I said, each their own. If, yeah. if I was to show you some of my back catalogue of training techniques back home, uh -huh. you'd probably be shocked by them as well. So. The thing is, I'm 25 and over 22 knockouts, so something's working, isn't it? Something must be working, anyway, yeah. I don't have the little one next to my, uh, in my column on my, on my See thing. what you did there, Lucas. You like that? Um, do we know how good, when I say we, I mean boxing fans, because that's you know, what I am and that's how I am kind of talking to you. Do we know how good Lucas Brown is yet? No, hell no. The fact of the matter is, I started fighting at 30. Um, I did two years of MMA, realised I wasn't any good at the wrestling and the kicking aspect, especially coming up against um, UFC light heavyweight champ Daniel Cormier, but back in the day, obviously. Um, so I stuck with boxing. So from 33 to now 38, so a good five years, almost six years, I've been boxing, so I've been learning the whole time, and I'm still learning now. I think if you get to the point where you stop learning, you, you're doing something wrong as well. So um, my trainer is very much focused on the amateur side of things, which is good because I can knock anyone out in the world. I need to actually learn the little intricacies of the footwork and, the, and all that sort of stuff. So myself and Roddy Williams out of Sydney, um, we get along really well. We're both on the same level in regards to you know what I want and what he wants. It, it gels nicely together. Um, so I think you're going to see, I think a lot of people with the Shigeo fight didn't expect me to come out and sort of move like I did and like move around, dance, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I think every time you're going to see me fight, you're going to see something different as well. Are you expecting the fight with Dylan White to be the toughest of your career? No, hell no. No? No. I think, 
she gave us obviously a hard fight, um, just but just being where it was as well. Um, and he was very crafty. Like whether whether people think he's he's old and over it and all that sort of stuff. Like I got caught got caught with that left hand proper. Obviously that's why I went down. Um, but he was very crafty with what he did. His footwork was impeccable, and and he set himself up perfectly. In terms of the hardest fight I've had so far would be the Rodenko fight, but that was because of the outside factors rather than just the boxing. I I, I come in there with. Complete other conf confidence in myself, hadn't trained properly, was overweight, all that sort of stuff. So I made the fight hard. I got to the fifth round and was thinking to myself, in, in the fight, I'd always talk to myself, and I was thinking, well, this is how I lose, you know? So it got to the sort of later rounds, and I thought, okay, I've got to bring it up, and, and, and I got back and eventually got the win. But um, in terms of hardest opponent so far, I'd have to be Shigay. So where do you rank? I know you haven't fought him yet, but where yeah. would you rank Dylan White in there? Was, was what, the second or third after those two opponents you just yeah, mentioned? Yeah, I'd, I'd probably say third, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Put him there. But I suppose the, the, you can really answer that question after the fight because... Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what can we expect on, on Thursday? <laughs> Honestly, it's all up to him. If he comes out and pulls out all these sort of different things from the bag, like I said, living at my mum's house, and, and basically just tries the shits through, I'm, I'm going to laugh it off, it's going to be great. But if he does stand in my face and, or comes at me and stuff like that, it's going to be a different story. You know I mean, I'm, he, he calls me a bully and all this sort of stuff. Well, I am. I've always been a bully. You know? like, I've never, I never deliberately bullied people around, but I've always been an enforcer, so to speak. Like I, I needed a reason to be able to go out and do it. So if he puts his face in my face, it's not going to be good for him, I'll tell you that. Interesting. Um, <laughs> Eddie Hearn labelled this. What did, this, what did Eddie Hearn it's say? Gonna it's going to be violent. It's going to be violent. It's going to be violent. I'm the sort of person where 90% of the time I'm just normal, happy, happy go lucky, all that sort of stuff. But there's, there's a 10% in me that there's like just utterly wrong, twisted wrong, demon devil, whatever you want to call it. And I like the fact that in a boxing ring I can let that out and he's going to feel it. I'm assuming the immediate plan for you uh, is to get a, a shot at the world title again. Yep. yep. Um, and your best route of doing that, uh, if you're successful on the 24th of March? In all honesty, yeah. um, I, I, I feel extremely cheated from what happened with the, the WA side of things, WBA side of things. Um, at this point in time, like I'm 38, turning 39 in April. Like, so for me, it really is about money. Um, I would love to get a world title, of course, because generally that's where the money is. But um, for me, it's a good, hard money fights that like sort of secure my legacy, so to speak. And that's what I'm after. So something like this is a great fight, yeah. Okay. Um, what would you make of Shannon Briggs' late, latest exploits? Have you seen his you know, This is the thing, man. I, I talk to everyone on social media, uh, like private messages and stuff, all the time. Shannon Briggs wants what, what he wants to walk me out for the fight, right. stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, someone like White, and I think it's uh, who's the other one? Tony Bellew, um, are the only two that like I really think just just dickheads. Just the way they they don't inter interact with other boxers. Like I, I talk to literally, I talk to Hay, I talk to Fury, I talk to all these sort of people from from America, from all, all different sort of countries. And then I spoke, I messaged uh, White about something, and he just was a child. So like. That was the end of that. I think Chisora was one of those ones as well. What just, was the thing with Bellew? Um, just the way he basically attacking me about being a, a drug cheat and I should be banned for life and all this sort of stuff. Like, I got cleared for the first one and the second one was a pre-workout. Like, get over yourself, seriously. Yeah, he, he, he said himself that he's never going to fight me because I hit too hard. So he's just going to shoot his mouth off and, and not step in the ring. So I think that's a bit doggy, to be honest. There's... Benny's kind of the the new heavyweight on the block, if you like. Obviously, fighting the new cruiserweight. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> had the victory over Hayes. He's got the rematch now on the the yep. the fifth of May. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> a very opinionated yes. fighter is is Tony Benny. And yeah. I don't mind being opinionated as long as you want to jump in the ring and and back it up. Now, if you think you're too small, then shut your mouth. Basically. Okay. Because um, again, none of these people will say it to my face because I just get slapped. Proper bitch slapped, you know what I mean? And, and so no one's ever going to come up, or every, anyone on social media, all that sort of stuff. That you do live halfway across the world. I'm here now. 
<laughs> yeah. We should do a call that if you, if you want it. If you want it, Paul's looking at me over there, probably thinking, "No, I'll be at the presser on Thursday." <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> if you want it, if you want got something to say, come and say it then. Yeah. Um, what have you made of the whole Tyson Fury situation? Uh, over obviously, it's gone on for a while now, but it yeah. seems to be sort of uh, a slightly what uh, somewhat clearer now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> coming from uh, the, the Santa Claus body to to trimming up and stuff like that as well again, which is good. Looks like he's got his head on straight, which is great. Um, I still think he's probably one of you know the best heavyweights around at the moment, and I can't see why he can't come back and reclaim whatever he had before. So I, I think it's good. I think he's an absolute character, good for the sport, gets people involved, and he can box. Like he's six foot nine and awkward as hell, but he can actually move and box. So I'd, I'd love to see him back in the ring. I remember that video we done, um, I think it was in Manchester, mm -hmm. it was you, Tyson and Eddie Chambers, do you remember that That's video? right, yeah. Uh, it, was the, it was the steak and the sandwich. <laughs> you said it, not me. No, no, Tyson said yeah, it. Tyson said it. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's obviously all this talk now, of, as we're sort of expecting a return uh, at some point this year from mm -hmm. Tyson Fury, with him and Anthony Joshua, uh, mm -hmm. an unformed Tyson Fury against an unformed Anthony Joshua. Uh, who wins that for you? Me personally, I still think Fury. Just because he's awkward. He's completely and utterly awkward. You can't, you can't sort of really prepare yourself for someone who's six foot nine with that reach and can move. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and Klitschko's fight was a classic, classic example of that, yeah. How many times have you fought in London before? No, first time I've ever been I, in London. First yeah, time yeah, in yeah. London. I've yeah, been to Manchester a few times, obviously where Ricky. Yeah. Um, I visited Liverpool. Uh, Martin Murray had something on over there. Uh, Hull and Wolverhampton and Sheffield. That's where I've been so far. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the last time I saw you. Was that the last time I saw you? I can't remember to be honest. If that was the last time I actually. The Redenko one. Yeah. That Wol was Wolverhampton. Wolverhampton. Yeah. Yeah. A while ago, anyway. So what's your plan for tomorrow? You've got a clear day? Yeah, yeah. I'm here early, which is like, you know, early meaning a couple of days off. And there's nothing actually booked until Thursday, like pretty full day Thursday. Yeah. So I think we ought to take in the sights and just have a look around and, yeah, freeze my ass off. Be a tourist for the day. Why not? Why not? What? I don't know if it's the way, like, generally for people who live in Sydney, don't necessarily go into the city a lot. So I'm assuming it's much the same around here. Like, yeah, you might live in Manchester, you don't actually come to London a lot, so I think. So there's still a lot to see, and there's a lot, you know, changing and building and doing. So, yeah, me and me and the boys are going to go out and have a look. The, they, they seem very interested. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I always wondered, you know, <coughs> say you've if you was to fought um, Joseph Parker. Yep. What's the rivalry between an Australian and a New Zealander? It's mainly, it obviously comes from like, you know, yeah, it's a sporting Sport, thing in the yeah. background, yeah, yeah. So it's much like, um, like an Ashes thing, I suppose. You, right. could, you, could, you could basically put it on the same level as that. Okay. I didn't know how fierce it was. That was all between. It's just there's probably more there's probably more like New Zealanders and Samoans in Australia than there is in New Zealand, to be honest. So it's just it's just the way it is. It's just it's it's, it's a nice, friendly, but competitive rivalry. So no one wants to kill each other or anything like that, but you know, it's just, he's from New Zealand, I'm from Australia, let's fight. Because no one really can view you as a New Zealander, but no. they could refer to Joseph Parker just through ignorance as an Australian. Yes. Which is true, isn't it? Because yeah. all my friends just think, yeah, that Australian fella that that's right, was fighting. That's right. But you know. Well, most people think that we're best mates because we're, the, we're so close, but no, yeah. I've, I've never actually met Parker. Oh, really? No. See, see. Oh, right, okay. oh really? Yeah. yeah no, I, I've never met him. No, no. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Again, talk talk all the time, but yeah. uh, and 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 great chats, you know, Good luck with this and all this sort of stuff, but uh, never actually met. No. So just finally, this is obviously your first fight of the year. I mean, how many more times do you anticipate fighting in 2018? I'd like to get three out if I could. Yeah. All depends on how it goes, obviously, but yeah. Yeah. Because if you are victorious, there will be obviously more opportunities for you over here. Yes, yes, without a doubt. And why not? Because the the the, the pound is doing so well at the moment, <laughs> so I don't mind coming over. And as I said, I've, I've, I'm always very well received over here, so I love coming over here. It's great, just cold. Absolutely. Mm. Um, I'm just trying to work out how Fuzzy's is going to go, and I can't. It depends on see what he does. It all depends on what he does. 
if he just comes out like a normal person and wants to psych the fight up and stuff like that, it's great. Do you know what someone asked me today, actually? They said to me um, about you. They yeah. said, oh, how do you think the press conference is going to go? And I said, I, don't, I, I generally, I don't know. It, it, it might just take, you know, mm. something to swing it. And they said, they said to me, are you one of these people that kind of, you'll say on social media, but when you're at the press conference, you, you wouldn't. And I said, no, I think if he was to say something on social media, yeah, yeah. he would replicate that yeah. in person. I don't yeah. see why he wouldn't. Yeah. So. In, in, in terms of vocally, 100%, I'll say everything to anyone's face because that's how I, I am. Um, the physicality side of things, like, I obviously don't want to get in a fight with a guy. You no. know what I mean? That's just, just dumb. So I may have to take myself out of a particular situation so I don't progress. But other than that, no. in terms of, of verbally, I'll say everything, yeah, 100%. Should be quite interesting. Yeah. All right, well, listen, have you got anything else you'd like to add, Lucas? Dylan White, don't be a child. I know you've got you to sell this fight and you've got to talk it up as much as you can and try and get some attention some way or another. But, uh, yeah, I, I do my fighting in the ring. And uh, Thursday's going to be fun anyway. Let's, let's see how we go Thursday. And then roll on March 24th. That's right. Well and truly. Lucas Brown, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. We'll definitely obviously catch up with you on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So uh, enjoy your night here and any day tomorrow. Thank you very much, sir. Tower of London is just there. I know, I know. I've yeah. already got the photo. You haven't been on social media yet. I've got, I've got, the, got the video, got the selfie, got the whole lot. That's how I knew you was in. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I messaged you. Thought, all right, that's not, I just thought that's not Perth. He's no, here. that's not Perth. No, that's no, no, not no, Perth. No. That's here. He's here. I photoshopped my head in perfect. <laughs> um, but we'll catch up with you on Thursday. Sweet. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your time. Thanks, bro.